everybody. Hello, friends out there. Welcome to yet another quarantini episode of I'm Horrified. We're still doing them. We are. Today, if you're watching on YouTube, you're getting a different background from me. And from me. Mally. We're in different rooms in our apartment. We mixed yeah. it up today. This is the first time we've moved from room to room since yeah. we've been recording these. Yeah, I did like one in my bedroom, and otherwise you've just been seeing my Star Wars posters, yeah. so. We did one month in the bedroom, one month in the office. I'm going to get to the kitchen soon. That's going to be amazing for wow. me. Wow. You know, you got to keep it fresh. Um, that's how it feels. It literally feels that way. It's like, I just look at my bedroom wall, like Winona Ryder and Girl Interrupted all day. Yeah, absolutely. What are you going to do? But we're, we're still here with you guys. We're excited to be here. Um, and we're talking about an exciting topic this week. Allie, I'll what are we talking about? What's that? I said, what are we talking about this week? Oh, hometown topic, which is we're going to discuss the best Boston movie. Woo! Which is its own genre. Yes. And as you guys, as longtime listeners will know, we both live in the Boston area. Um, I came here for college. Allie's grown up in like the Metro West Boston area her whole life. So we've both been here for like a minute now and we feel much love for the city. For Boston bitches through and through. I think it's the point we can say. Um, and the Boston movie genre is, is a harrowing one. Um, it's got a complex legacy. I'm going to talk about Spotlight. Sam, which, which movie have you chosen? Um, I would say one that has an equally um, important and complex legacy in Boston, and that's Fever Pitch. Right. So we're going for top drama, yeah. top comedy. You Absolutely. can't compare the two, I think. <laughs> and that is very important. You've got your, like, Adam Sandler-style romp, and then you've got your Boston. It's terrible. It's like, it's, those are the two... Genres of movies. The two sort of sides of the genre. So I'm going to start, because mine is a bummer. Yes. Like a lot of Boston movies. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they're all such a bummer. Who made that decision? That's so true. I was in- Robert made that decision without consulting us. In researching for this podcast, I had to remember and like Google what happens in The Departed just because I was like, that's like a Boston movie. What happens in that? And it's like so confusing and bleak that it's It's like- It's such a bummer. He's a rat. He's the mole. They're getting shot. He's thrown off a building. I was just like, I've never seen anyone get thrown off a building. Not even I'm honestly, I'm going to talk about that in a second. (laughs) Um, I will say that we both had the same initial idea. Because I I was like, Boston movie, fever bitch, obviously. Yes. But that's in the feel-good category of Boston film. And to just discuss the feel-good category (laughs) is not doing the Boston film, you know, catalog justice. (laughs) Most Boston films, for some reason are dirty and sad and horrible Mm -hmm. for your soul. And um, they're cinematically good, but not fun at all. No. Um, You and I saw John Mulaney um, live when he did his last stand-up tour, and he was like, oh, hello, Boston. Like, I love being here. And he was like, Boston, you guys are amazing, but, like, the movies you let people make about you, (laughs) like, (laughs) they're so bleak. And it's so true, like, I think about, like, the first ones that spring to mind are kind of, like, really the only ones, like, Gone Baby Gone, Mm -hmm. so upsetting to watch, Manchester by the Sea is, like, the saddest thing I've ever seen, Mystic River is very Mm -hmm. difficult to watch also, not to be confused with Mystic Pizza, which is a different film. Very different. Very different. (laughs) Um, uh, And I know a lot of you people are going to be like, oh, The Departed, that's the best drama. Wrong. You're wrong. I am one of those Bostonians who thinks The Departed is kind of overrated. And my boyfriend would disagree, but every boyfriend would disagree with that. Every boyfriend there's ever been loves The Departed, and I'm sick of it. Um, It's the catcher in the rye of Boston movies. It's it's (laughs) over for me. Um, So, yeah, besides the feel-good favorite, Fever Pitch, I'm going with Spotlight as the best Boston movie. Best Boston drama. I think it deserves the top spot. I'll explain why. So... For you out there, if you're a post-9-11 child, which we are not, um, if you don't remember 2002, um, in 2002, there was um, an investigative journalism team at the Boston Globe who published findings that exposed sexual abuse in the Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. And it wasn't the first, like, criminal investigation against Catholic priests. That had happened before. But this particular investigation 
blew the lid off of how systemic these crimes were and proved like the pattern of abuses being covered up by members of the clergy, um, specifically in Boston. And then it just kind of like exploded everywhere. And it became clear that there was a pattern of clergy members and higher ups in the church, um, you know, harboring abusers and silencing victims and moving abusers from place to place, from church to church in the Boston area, predominantly in poor neighborhoods. Um, and it was, horrific, very, very hard time <laughs> for the Catholic community and the community, like the Catholic community in Boston is the Boston community um, in a lot of ways. It's huge, hugely influential in Boston. Um, but it also like sent a shockwave through the nation. It was, I mean, the Boston Globe is um, an extremely well-respected newspaper no matter what. And so this story was huge news and it made people confront you know, what being a Catholic meant now and how it had changed. And, you know, nobody kind of knew what the fallout was going to be. Um, but our understanding of Catholic, like of, of sexual abuse in the Catholic church was defined by this reporting. Mm -hmm. And in, oh, I don't even know what date it was released. What, 2015? I'm going to look it up. Be probably around then. I think probably 2015. I think we were like juniors in college. Yeah, 2015. In 2015, they made a movie about the Boston Globe Spotlight team, which is the investigative journalism team who covered this, <laughs> it's not an event, this thing, this terrible, <laughs> this yeah. terrible happening of- This horrible pattern. This horrible thing, this horrible thing. Um, and uh, so yeah, they published their findings in 2002. In 2003, they received the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service. So big deal. Um, but why is this the best Boston movie? Yes, it is set in Boston, takes place at the Boston Globe, but I think it's the best Boston movie because it deals with a lot of themes that are integral to the city of Boston, being a Bostonian, the communities that are here, um, and those being knowledge and power, and like how power controls knowledge and you know what knowledge means and the responsibility that we have when we know things um the connection between faith family and community and what we owe to each other as neighbors in a community and so boston has this really interesting dichotomy between you have like super liberals and then super like blue collar conservatives who are very stubborn and set in their ways. And you know, you have these pillars of academia and knowledge and education, and then people who wanna stick to, you know, the way things were in the good old days, which don't exist. Um, and there really is like this dichotomy between like these kind of two worlds that exist in Boston, and that's kind of always been there. Um, through its whole history. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that it really captures is like the way that Boston experiences things as a community, like the way that the city acts sort of like a town in the way. Also another Boston movie, The Town, not my favorite. Um, <laughs> but like the way that Boston reacts to either tragedies or victories sports obviously like how it kind of reacts to things like a family in a lot of ways and how it really is like a big small town mm -hmm. um and and captured the way that boston grieved this tragedy you know like many people in boston you know came out as victims of abuse or learned that their loved ones were were also victims of abuse and i think like one of my favorite sentiments of this movie is that knowledge demands confrontation and conflict and like, that's the only way a society can move forward. Mm. And that's very much in the fabric of Boston as, you know, leading a lot of, um, you know, civil rights movements. Um, we have a history of like Fre Frederick Douglass lived here and a lot of um, people who spoke out about segregation and civil rights. Like there were a lot of hubs of people who were working for civil rights living in Boston during that time period. So I feel like, I don't know, like, I just feel like it kind of captures that energy and spirit and it does it really, really well. Um, and yeah, like that theme of responsibility of knowledge and truth. I think that's just like a really nuanced aspect of the city that I really love. I think it was done really well. 
And it was also really good. Like, it was just, like, a good movie. Like, it was sad, obviously, but it's just, like, yeah. really, you get into it. You're yeah, like, you do. Mark Ruffalo's, like, running to the court to get the papers, and he's like, I have it. I have the story. And Michael Keaton's like, you're getting too emotional. Mark Ruffalo's like, you can't be too emotional. And Mark Ruffalo just serving it. And then Rachel McAdams is there. Rachel McAdams plays Keaton the girl. She's there, <laughs> serving it, doing a great job. Yes. Um, it was really good. So, so for the, the fun, interesting, complicated reasons, I think it's the best Boston movie. But then also it's just a really good movie. Yeah. And it's better than The Departed, I think. Sorry. I believe that. I, it's been a while since I've seen either of them, but I remember really liking Spotlight, and I remember li- The Departed leaving me with a feeling of, like, Ugh. that sure was a lot of white A-list actors in one movie. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I care. Spotlight, yeah. I care. Yeah. I'll also say, if you've seen The Post, that's a good movie, too. It's not as good as Spotlight, and it's the same. Mm. It's the same of, like, journalists uncovering the truth and being brave and you know speaking truth to power and my sweet journalist boyfriend always likes to say that like journalists are always like these badass heroes in films but Mm -hmm. never in real life (laughs) are they treated as such it's like the most thankless job in real life like nobody shows like journalists any respect um on a daily basis but whenever you see a journalist in a movie it's like all the president's men are like just like this amazing story of like heroism and bravery and poor thing (laughs) (laughs) maybe he thought that's what it was gonna be like maybe he did he'd be like running around trying to get the story i gotta get the scoop sometimes it's like that i'm sure has he ever said scoop seriously i'd love to know that i don't think seriously (laughs) Like, in a newsroom, he's talking to his boss, and he's like, I have a scoop. You'll have to ask his boss. I don't know about that. Um, I would. I would only talk in, like, a transatlantic, like, 1940s accent. Like, we got to get the scoop down at the at the water fountain, or we got to go talk to the people about this. They've got to know. Like, I and I would be insufferable. Yep. Insufferable. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Spotlight, better than The Departed. Though I will say, I think if I had to choose, like, my favorite Boston movie, it's the one you're about to talk about. So, Sam, take oh, it away. Let's talk about Fever Pitch, you guys. Oh. <laughs> um, for anyone that doesn't know, Fever Pitch is a 2005 rom-com, and it stars um, Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy and Fallon at his most likable. Yeah, it was only downhill from here for Jimmy Fallon, honestly. Um, but Jimmy Fallon plays um, a Boston-area school teacher. And his whole life, he's loved the Boston Red Sox. He inherited season tickets from his uncle. And so he goes, like, obsessively. And his whole life is about the Red Sox. And he meets Drew Barrymore, who, like, is, like, not originally from Boston. So she doesn't really care about the Red Sox or sports. And she's, like, a very business-minded person, like, very professionally focused. And at first, they seem, like, totally opposite. But then they start dating, and they kind of fall in love. And he brings her to all these Red Sox games. And she, like, kind of has fun, kind of enjoys it. But it's, like, his whole life. So it becomes a roadblock in their relationship. uh, Because he is, like, he would rather go to, like, any Red Sox game than, like, important functions with her. Events, like, go on a date, like, any of that. He's, like, I have to be with the Red Sox tonight. And she has to be, like, you know they don't know you're there. Like, <laughs> Um, but at the end, like, they both, like, learn to respect each other, and he's ready to, like, sell his Red Sox season tickets for her, and then she's like, no, like, you love me enough to sell those, but I love you enough not to make you sell them, and they're in love. So I think that's number one about this movie. It is a genuinely good rom-com. Like, if you're interested in a romantic comedy, Fever Pitch is gonna give you what you want that night, you know what I mean? Absolutely. They're both likable, but they both have to learn and grow to be with each other, but you want them to make out. You want them to work out. But the other reason I rated Fever Pitch so high is because I think the fact that it's in Boston like really elevates it and makes it more special. Like there is something about going to Fenway Park and seeing a Red Sox game 
that is just like kind of magical. Like I'm not a person who cares about sports. It is magical. It's magical. But like any opportunity I get to go to Fenway Park, I want to. Like I'm genuinely excited to go and sit in the hot sun with like a hot beer and watch this game I don't care about. Because there's just something about the energy. And I can totally see how like the Jimmy Fallon character is obsessed with it and goes constantly. And I also think uh, there's something to like the prototypical Boston guy is the guy who is like obsessed with the Red Sox, but also like learns to really strongly prioritize family. Mm-hmm. And that's both like found family, like he's really close with everybody else who has season tickets around him, which is very cute. But then also like he makes room for Drew Barrymore in his life, which is beautiful. Yeah, they both change for each other in a healthy way. Exactly. You know I mean? It's not Greece style. No, like, which is what we want out of a good rom-com. Is they like, don't yeah, compromise who they work. are yeah. for, for the relationship, but they, they do things to lift up the other person. Exactly. And that's exactly. great. And then the other fun thing about Fever Pitch, um, that's just one of my favorite things about it, is that they uh, famously, and for anyone who is not familiar with uh, Boston Red Sox or, you know, American baseball or whatever, <laughs> famously, the Red Sox did not win a World Series for, like, 86 years. Like, they were just on a constant losing streak. They Due would to the curse up. of the Bambino. Look it up. The Bambino. But they would never, ever win. So when they wrote this movie, they wrote it that the Red Sox lost in the playoffs. This is a beautiful thing. This is the most beautiful thing about this movie. <laughs> Because the Boston Red Sox always lose in the playoffs. So, of course, they wrote it that the Red Sox lose in the playoffs, but this couple is very happy together and lives their life. The year they were filming this movie, 2004, the curse of the Bambino was broken and the Red Sox won the World Series. So they had to, like, rewrite the end of the movie. And in the context of the movie, like, the, the couple, Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon, like, go and see the Red Sox win. Yeah, they're, like, at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, like, during game four, and they, like, run onto the, like, crowd, and, like, yeah. oh, it's so cute, like, that and that's the year. It's and just Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon were, like, at that game, like, being in character so they could get those shots of them, like, at the World Series. <laughs> like, I'm, cry- I'm crying. crying. I'm, like, it's just so, it meant so much to us as yeah. a community. <laughs> and it's so beautiful that, like, the year they were filming this movie, they were like, of course the Red Sox won't win. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, and 86 what I think, years. What? 86 years. Yeah, like 86 years. not gonna change now. And what I actually found out in researching this, which I didn't know, is that this story is actually based on, like, a memoir a guy wrote. But mm-hmm. he wrote it about, because he loved, um, like, English football. He was, like, a huge Arsenal fan. Yep. So he was writing, like, a memoir of his life in Arsenal games. And one of the pivotal moments is Arsenal has, like, a famous very, very long losing streak, and then they miraculously win, and that's, like, the climax of the novel, basically. Um, And so the fact that, like, that translated so well into the Red Sox winning when they had not won in, again, like, over 80 years is just, like, a little bit of Boston magic for you. It really is. Um, and then I also just want to shout out so quickly, um, someone that we both know, a really awesome Boston uh, playwright and actress, Melinda Lopez, has a role in this movie where she gets to yell, Johnny Damon, you've got the best ass in the league. Yeah, the, that's the pivotal line. Yeah. Johnny Damon, you got the sweetest ass in the league. Yes. Oh, God. I interviewed her once on a piece about Boston theater. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was be like, I love your fever pitch. <laughs> And Lopez, you've got the sweetest talent in the league. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, <laughs> oh, it's it's so it feels so good. It's such a feel good movie. It's so good. Uh, and then the quickest of shout outs. So I I didn't choose this for my movie because I don't think the fact that it's in Boston is important to it. And I think if you're going to choose like best Boston movie, the fact that it's in Boston has to be like integral to the plot. A little bit. But there's a really, really cute other rom-com, and it stars Anna Ferris and Chris Evans, Captain America, uh, and it's called What's Your Number? And she doesn't want to sleep with any more men uh, because she's already slept with 20, and she reads an article that if you've slept with over 20 men, you'll never find love. So she goes back through all of her ex-boyfriends to see if any of them have gotten better, and none of them have. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, he is like her neighbor who is like, sleeps around and is really promiscuous who's helping her track down these guys and then they fall in love I've never seen this how have you not told me about this before 
it's really fun. And I found out it takes place in Boston as I was kind of uh, researching for this. And you can tell now that I think about it, like they're definitely in the North End for some of the scenes and like they're on the tee. But um, well, I did- Chris Evans is a hometown boy. He is a hometown boy. So I respect that. That's the one thing about Fever Pitch. Like I do wish they had gotten a real Boston fan to um, be the Jimmy Fallon character. Because in reality, he's a Yankees fan, which is d- disappointing. Which is not right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. But yeah. what do you do? Why he couldn't they get Chris Evans? He was in the um, Boston couple uh, sketch- sketches in SNL. That's true. So I do feel like that offers him some Boston cred. And Rachel Dratch was in those. Rachel Dratch is a Bostonian. He's Absolutely true. Boston. Um, but, uh, my heart is so warm. I love Fever Boston Pitch. Love. If you're looking for a good rom-com, check out Fever Pitch. And honestly, check out What's Your Number. It was really good. That's a great double feature. That's double feature, feature, Boston Night. Um, what else? Are you- we're going to have to watch it because you would like it. It's very- I really want to watch it now. That sounds adorable. Yes. Um, I also was, I loved Chris Evans stretching his range and knives out, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but, all right, that was, oh, now I just want to go, I want to go outside and enjoy our city, but, be in Boston. Yeah, we'll just, we'll love it from afar, sweet we'll, Boston. We'll watch these movies and think fondly of it. We'll watch these movies, and we hope we, that you do too, and until, till next episode, be well, everyone. Be well, bye guys.